Okay, so Zorin OS 16 is out in the wild. And this is the release candidate, the final release candidate that I've had uh, installed on the system for just a little while now. Uh, now, here's the thing. I've already made a video about Zorin OS 16 and that was when it was back in beta. So if you want to go over sort of the new features and uh, and what are all the goodies that you can find in Zorin OS 16, then definitely go watch that video because this video is talking about the end product of Zorin OS 16 and I believe the impact that a desktop like this can have in the world of computers and technology and, uh, and in software. So. Strap in, buckle up, let's get going. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this particular video a little bit shorter than my last few deep dives where I've talked about uh, operating systems at great length. Uh, because what I'm running right now is the pro version, which replaces the ultimate version that Zorin used to have. Now, there is a great debate going back and forth uh, that's existed ever since Zorin uh, has used this particular funding model of is it worth paying for the uh, ultimate edition or in this case now the pro edition that they have uh, announced on their blog a few days ago. And, uh, and look, here's my quick hot take on the matter. First of all, it's not about paying for software that you can download and install for free. It's about supporting a project that is putting the desktop and desktop users first. That's what it looks like in my head. And uh, with the improvements that uh, the team continues to make to Zorin overall, and you know the extra little bits and bobs that you get with the pro version, uh, to me, that is worth throwing a few dollars in this case, 39 US type dollars at this project. Again, like in the beta video, I want to acknowledge my bias up front because I know that my strong feelings about this project and uh, and how much I love what they're doing for desktop Linux probably far uh, outweighs my objective ability to look at an OS and uh, judge it on all its metrics of performance and all of that kind of thing. However, what I do know is that I've been running this OS as my daily driver since it came out in its beta form and it has not stopped impressing me yet. Uh, now, here's what it boils down to. Again, if you need features, then go watch the beta review video or the beta first look. Uh, what I'm talking about is just my own subjective opinion. First of all, the pro version that I have here, I also need to full disclaimer, acknowledge that this is something that the Zorin team made available to me for free. I didn't have to pay for it beforehand. It's something that the Zorin team have done consistently with a lot of Linux YouTubers, as I understand. Uh, but it is worth mentioning that I do get this uh, on my system without having to pay for it. So keep that in mind. However, the beta version that I was running until this final build was available was the core version. And I was set up very nicely in that core version with everything ticking along wonderfully. So since then, the things that I have appreciated is that now we do in fact have the, uh, the Windows 11 layout. It was originally gonna be pitched as the Windows 10 X layout, but now that we have Windows 11 announced and we know what it looks like, it was worth updating that great quality of life improvement because chances are Zorin OS 16 is gonna be around for the next three years or so, and it will have security updates until uh, April of 2025. That means that the majority of users switching from laptops bought in the coming five years are gonna be used to Windows 11's layout by default. Meaning that uh, if you've got an OS that can look like Windows 11 out of the box, more power to you. It is actually pretty easy to achieve a Windows 11 look in the core version simply by right clicking on the taskbar, going into taskbar settings and just positioning some of these elements to uh, monitor center. Um, now, while you won't get the app grid in Zorin core that you do in the pro version, you still get the same functionality in terms of an app menu with quick links to the stuff that you care about. And then the Windows key still gives you the app 
keyboard launcher anyway uh, that's that's default to GNOME. So it in my mind the the Windows desktop or the Windows 11 layout is a nice to have but it's not mission critical in my mind. What is mission critical is having a taskbar that looks consistent that has great little functionality tweaks like progress bars along the bottom of the uh, like file transfers and stuff like that, notification badges if you've got messaging apps and that kind of thing living down here and uh, also really responsive window previews especially if you have have multiple instances of the app open. This taskbar is really functional. You can see I've just gotten an email pop through and now I've got a little notification there waiting for me. Really nice to have. I, I wax lyrical about the inclusion of trackpad gestures in my beta video and I have definitely appreciated those over the long run of having this system running. The ability to quickly swipe through and pinch to expose the different windows that I have open, really nice. The other things that I have come to appreciate are really just improvements that the Zorin team have managed to package in from other open source uh, operating systems, standards, and releases. So buttery smooth GNOME performance is uh, largely, I guess, thanks to the work that the GNOME 3.38 release was able to roll into its desktop. But to me, the desktop does feel consistently more responsive across the board, and it has remained so over the course of me running the beta into the final release over the last uh, couple of months, to be honest. It really has gone pretty quickly. Uh, now, the other thing that I did want to reiterate is just how much software is available to you out of the box uh, from the software store. Now, obviously in the pro version, you have a bunch of apps that are pre-installed and Honestly, I think they have one of the best collections in the pro version of professional grade uh, creative and productivity uh, software. Uh, key among those, uh, the standouts for me anyway, are Barrier, which is a, a great open source tool that allows you to connect uh, the same mouse and keyboard across multiple computers uh, to be able to use those com uh, the, the same controls to control multiple uh desktops, which I think is amazing, uh, and other little bits and pieces. But um, the collection of software on the pro version is great, but the collection on the sof of software that is out of the box default on Zorin OS Core is also very good. But more importantly, the ability to go and get whatever software you need from the software store is really great. And uh, especially compared to the Ubuntu desktop, this software store doesn't actually chug like you wouldn't believe. The first launch of this uh, of this software store for me was snappy and I was able to start downloading and previewing apps straight away. And another little tweak that I didn't really uh, realize was a thing because of the fact I don't really use Windows software is that uh, they actually have some really handy little uh, warnings that can be that can pop up for commonly installed Windows applications. So for new users coming over from Windows if you are, let's say, you're wanting to install Zoom or you're wanting to install Overwatch, uh, there's actually a database that Zorin OS have set up that will compare that setup file and go, actually, this person is wanting to install Zoom rather than installing this Windows piece of software, which it will attempt to do if you tell it to, uh, it will recommend that you go and install Zoom from the software store or that you go and install Overwatch from the Lutris store. And, uh, and this is flipping amazing because not only will it suggest alternatives if there is no way to get this natively working, uh, but it still gives you the ability to just click the install Windows app support and give it a whirl anyway. Uh, chances are, if there already exists a great way to do it in the open source world, this little pop-up is going to suggest it when you double click on that .exe or the .msi file. It's like a really subtle little touch that is going to make a huge difference to a lot of people. Okay, I really do appreciate the, the list of small things and these are all kind of the cumulative things that have been added to Zorin uh, since its last release just by virtue of it being more recent. Fractional scaling for high resolution displays, the latest NVIDIA file uh, drivers. I'm using the 470 driver at the moment, which is great. Joining Active Directory, that's courtesy of the Ubuntu team, starring files in the Nautilus file manager, uh, fingerprint reader support. Again, a lot of this is inherited from the uh, great work that Ubuntu has been doing, um, but it's all polished and packaged so much nicer in a product like Zorin because they have the time, the money, and the uh, willingness to invest on the desktop 
end user experience compared to just uh, cobbling a new release together out of all of the open source bits that have been updated. But here's where a product like Zorin lands for me. Uh, here's what I want out of a system. I want a system that looks consistent, that looks really smooth, well-designed and like it belongs in the 21st century. Gnome was already giving us that, but the elevation of uh, personalization with the accent colors, the light and dark theme, which can automatically roll over, a lovely collection of wallpapers, both abstract and photographic, at least in the pro version, out of the box system tray icons, out of the box functional taskbar, out of the box quick um, quick switching to whatever workflow you are used to be that classic windows mac os ubuntu gnome etc a vast library of software that can easily be updated ready built-in support for any windows applications you might want to run and everything working really smoothly and without any crashes this represents for me personally and again i'm talking very personally because this is the kind of product I wished existed when I first started using Linux back in 2010. Now, the funny thing is that now that we're here and now that we have a recommendation, or at least I have a recommendation that I can just throw out to people and just go, go download Zorin OS Core 16. If you like what you see, boot it up in a virtual machine, try it on a live USB. If you like what you see, go and throw some money at the pro version, set it up, you'll be right for years. That is impressive. And I really hope to see this project go further with uh, Zorin Grid and having device management to be able to roll out in schools and workplaces and that kind of thing. Because honestly, the amount of work that the Zorin team do to package up a bunch of GNOME extensions, parts of the GNOME desktop, a huge amount of open source packaging that the Zorin team take on, polish up, make it as stable and as pretty as possible to then package into their final build of Zorin OS 16 is really like, I mean, you might not necessarily agree with what they're doing, but you got to respect the amount of polish that is going into every corner of this top to bottom. I've seen a lot of Linux distributions come and go. And the fact that the consistent improvement that a project like Zorin continues to show and the every release seems to garner further critical acclaim as it were, I would have very few hesitations recommending Zorin as like the go-to desktop user Linux, because this is what I wished existed when I was starting out. So yeah, this is definitely a shoe in for distro of the year for me personally, uh, impressive, impressive product. And it's uh, what a time to be alive. We have so many fantastic options. Pop OS is killing it. Elementary OS has got an amazing release just come out. Zorin OS is uh, going on to bigger and better things. Not to mention Fedora is just a technological wonder. Honestly, there's so much to love. Let me know in the comments, what is the standout features uh, from Zorin OS 16 for you personally? The sum of all its parts to me is incredibly impressive. I think I've said that enough now. Peace out.